This man lying in the fire is not dead yet. But, he was cremated by his family. Because of the hot flames, his feet were still curling upwards, as if resisting the injustice of fate. This scene scared their young son to death. Baram was born in India. His family was extremely poor. His whole family was crammed into a shabby house. The head of the family was his cunning grandmother. Everyone in the family had to earn money from an early age. Every penny they earned, they had to give it to their grandmother. Baram was a bright boy. He did very well in his studies. He was praised by his teachers. The teacher told him, In the jungle, there is an extremely rare animal. A white tiger king that can only be found once in a generation. And the teacher praised him for being that white tiger. The teacher also said, he should go to the big city to get a better education. But fate was not kind. His father became seriously ill from working so hard. He could no longer earn an income for the family. Her cruel grandmother, she cremated him alive. After her father's death, Baram was forced to drop out of school. Grandma forced Baram to work in a mill tea store. That day the landlord came to collect the rent. The whole village had to give a third of their income to the landlord every year. But Baram wasn't willing to stay in the village all his life without a future. Baram was waiting for a chance, and so he waited for 18 years. One day Baram overheard a customer's conversation. He learned that the landlord's youngest son had just returned from studying in America. He was in need of a driver. This was a chance for Baram to change his fate. Because driver number one was fired, Baram got the chance to go to the capital. He drove off with the landlord's two sons, the eldest and the youngest, Ashok, and Ashok's wife, Pinky. Oh, man. These were only his fantasies. Soon Baram delivered his host to the hotel without any problems. He took the freight elevator to the luxury suite. Baram wanted to see the view from the window, but the boss stopped him. Then he drove the car to the underground garage. As a servant, he had to live in the basement where he couldn't see the light of day. He looked at himself in the mirror. It was the first time he brushed his teeth in over 20 years, and the confusion came over him. Why had I lived so long, but no one ever taught me how to brush my teeth? Why did my father raise me, living like an animal? He couldn't understand any of this. It was Pinky's birthday. Ashok stayed up late with her. On the way back, Pinky, already drunk and confused, insisted on driving. And with her husband's acquiescence, Aram had to sit in the back, under the anesthesia of alcohol. Pinky accidentally hit a child cross in the street. By the time they got out of the car, the child was no longer moving. Ashok was in a hurry to take the kid to the hospital, but Baram stopped him and told them to get in the car. In India, it's not unusual for poor families. It's not unusual to have a dancing children. Even the parents can't remember their children's names. Maybe no one will even go to the police. And even if they did, in Delhi, the police won't let that kind of person into the police station. When he got home, he wiped the blood off the car. Baram slept with a smile on his face that night because he had shown his master the most loyalty. The next day, the landlord and his eldest son came. They warmly invited Baram into the house. Just when he thought the landlord would be grateful, the landlord's lawyer handed him a document. It was a surrender document, and in the family section, Grandma had signed it in advance. He became angry. He became disloyal. He started over invoicing car repairs, selling gasoline out of the tank. And when he got brave, he was picking up and dropping off paying customers on the road. In less than a month, he earned more than his 20 year salary. That day, Baram overheard Ashat talking to the boss. He knew he was about to be replaced. By chance, Baram saw the money in his handbag. This money was more than he could ever earn in his life. If he kills Ashak, if he kills Ashak and takes the red bag, then his family will not survive. Baram has made up his mind. After he got to know, Ashak was going to bribe a high official with Vermillion this day. He broke the glass bottle and hid it in his car. That night, it was raining heavily. Halfway through the journey, he used the excuse that his car had broken down. He lured Ashok out of the car, and then with the bottle he had prepared, without hesitation, he smashed Ashok's neck and slit his throat. He was relieved at that moment and drove away from the scene. And that was that. Baram took his nephew and ran away by train overnight. He traveled several times to Bangalore. Then he hid in his room for a month. He waited until he had calmed down. Baram didn't learn anything else in his master's house, but he learned it to bribe. That day, he bribed the commissioner with money. He got his warrant revoked. And through the commissioner's connections, he started a local car rental agency. With his current value, he is now worth 15 times the amount of money that the original owner paid. But his only regret is, I'll never know what happened to my family.